Resistant hypertension. This is a very difficult problem for the clinician, and today we'll discuss how to define resistant hypertension, how to identify the causes or potential causes in this very difficult clinical problem. So let's start with the definition. Resistant hypertension is the presence of elevated blood pressure despite the use of three drugs, one of which includes a diuretic. The most important step in resistant hypertension management is to determine whether it's truly resistant. White coat hypertension and true resistant hypertension are often competing diagnoses. This diagnosis must be made by establishing the patient has true hypertension. Let's discuss white coat hypertension in a little bit of detail. This is when a patient presents to clinic, has elevated blood pressure, and tells you or is uncertain whether their blood pressure is at home or better. These patients must have ambulatory blood pressure monitoring to confirm whether they have true resistant hypertension. Common causes of hypertension include the following. One is increased intake of sodium. Patients often underestimate how much sodium they take in. Increased sodium intake leads to hypertension, which can be very difficult to manage with blood pressure medications. Education about sodium intake is mandatory, as is a dietary history, which can include digging into what patients eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily, and looking for those hidden causes of sodium intake. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are another hidden cause of hypertension. Patients take these medications because they're accessible, and one of their side effects is sodium retention. It's very important to ask questions about whether patients take over-the-counter medicines, being specific and asking specific types of medications, including ibuprofen, Motrin, and naproxen. Obstructive sleep apnea. As obesity rates rise, patients are developing more and more obstructive sleep apnea, which leads to more and more hypertension. Again, this is very difficult to manage in the sense of more medications until this problem is addressed. So before one embarks on an evaluation for a true secondary cause of hypertension, it's important, again, to establish the patient is not taking in too much sodium, is not using nostril anti-inflammatory drugs, and is not overly stressed by obstructive sleep apnea. If these causes are ruled out and the patient has hypokalemia, one can start to investigate causes of secondary hypertension. This is defined as hypertension with hypokalemia and no diuretic, or hypertension with hypokalemia and a diuretic but a sodium a potassium less than 3.5. So let's investigate some of the uncommon causes of hypertension one by one and some of the salient features of each. The first is Kahn syndrome. Kahn syndrome is the presence of a aldosterone-producing adenoma in the adrenal gland, which leads to hypertension and hypokalemia. If one sees a patient with low potassium, no presence of diuretic, and hypertension, this diagnosis should be entertained. Another common cause of secondary hypertension is renal artery stenosis. This is present in patients who have other evidence of vasculopathy and often presents with resistant hypertension. If one sees hypertension, hypokalemia, and the presence of other vascular injuries, including carotid artery disease, coronary artery disease, or claudication in the history of smoking, this diagnosis should be considered. Phaochromocytoma and Cushing syndrome are also other uncommon causes of hypertension but have their own clinical presentations. A very uncommon cause of hypertension and hypokalemia but often tested is Little syndrome. This is a defect of the ENAC which stands for epithelial sodium channel, in which sodium is reabsorbed and potassium is excreted, leading to hypertension. A very common board question is how to define the difference between Kahn syndrome, renal artery stenosis, and another condition called apparent mineralocorticoid excess, or little syndrome. In this pictorial here, I'll try to illustrate how to tease those diseases out. So to go back to the top in terms of how to work this up, if the patient has hypertension and hypokalemia, You've ruled out white coat hypertension. You've also ruled out ca other causes of hypertension, including sodium intake, NSAIDs, and OSA. You enter into the algorithm of secondary hypertension. In Kahn syndrome, an adenoma is producing aldosterone autonomously, which leads us to the suppression of renin, hence the elevated aldosterone and low renin present. In renal artery stenosis, the kidney is not receiving appropriate blood flow, and this leads to the, the release of aldosterone and renin, in which they're both increased. In apparent mineralocorticoid excess, 
something binds to the receptor mimicking aldosterone, thereby downregulating them and turning them off. This is also the mechanism in Little syndrome. So resistant hypertension is a vexing clinical problem and often does not have an exotic cause. It's very important to define it, rule out easy things like increased sodium, nonsteroidals, and sleep apnea, and embark on the workup of secondary hypertension when appropriate. This is resistant hypertension.